So in this question here, we've been asked to do a statistical test to see if there's any correlation between a chemical factory that was burning some chemicals and did it give any bad symptoms to anybody in the area or not. Now, what we've got here is a contingency table with the outcomes of the survey that was carried out. Now, people in this column here, these guys here had some bad symptoms from the burning at the chemical factory. And then these guys here, these guys didn't have bad symptoms from the chemical factory. So first things first, we'll add these columns up. So we've got 331 here, and 147 plus 83, that's 230. So that's our cases and our controls. And then we, what we've got here, we've got along this column here, this row here, Guys that was exposed to these chemicals uh, that was released into the air from the burning and those that wasn't released, uh, exposed to the chemicals that was burning in the air. So I'm going to add these up here as well. So that will give us 112 and that will give us 449. So that's our data that we've been given in. And we want to calculate the odds ratio that there is some correlation between the burning at the chemical factory or not by using this data that we've been given. Now the odds ratio tells us that this is just a sample of the population. It's not the whole population. So odds ratio is for that. If you want to use the whole population, then there is other calculations that we can do for that, such as relative risk and stuff like that. But in this video, we're just gonna look at the odds ratio. And then we're gonna calculate a 95% confidence interval to see how valid our odds ratio is. And then we're gonna draw a conclusion to that at the end. Okay, so first of all, let's draw up the odds ratio. Let's see what that comes to. So odds ratio. So my notation for that for today's video, I'm just gonna write that as OR in capital letters and hat, so hat OR. Okay, now the way we calculate that is using our contingency table, our numerator and denominator of a fraction, because it's called a ratio, obviously a fraction is going to be part of our calculations. So our numerator will come from the exposed. So we'll have cases exposed, so cases exposed, and then we will divide that by our controls that are exposed. And that would be our numerator. And then our denominator is just the opposite of those, which is our case is not exposed, divided by our controls not exposed. Okay, so then all we do now is just plug in our numbers and that will give us our odds ratio in terms of a value. So let's go straight to that. So case is exposed, that's 83 divided by controls exposed, that's 29. So 83 divided by 29. So we can see that it's just gonna be just below three. Then here, case is not exposed, that's 147. And then case is not exposed, uh, controls not exposed, sorry, it's 302. So 147 divided by 302. So this is just gonna be just under a half. So we've got just under three divided by just under a half. So we know we're going to end up somewhere near six. That's some sort of rough, rough estimation. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get a value that's approximately 5.880. So that's our odds ratio for our calculations that we have so far. Okay, so that's quite a high number, 5.880. So that would give us indication that there is positive correlation between the burning at the chemical plant and people getting bad symptoms from it. Okay, so now what we want to do is to calculate a 95% confidence interval to see if there's any difference and discrepancy in this value at all. So a 95% confidence interval, let's write this down here, 95% confidence interval, as this would be a two-tail kind of uh, calculation, we want our quantile, 
quantile to be 97 point, uh, 0.975. So our phi value on our normal distribution tables, we're looking for the quantile of 975 or 0.975. And then if you look on your table, that will give you an approximate value of 1.96. So I'll put that as an approximation, but that's the general value that we use for our uh, phi value of the quantile of 0.975. Okay, so now our confidence interval, our formula for that is we have our odds ratio uh, from the positive side and our odds ratio from the negative side, that will give us two numbers. That's what we're looking for. So the calculation for that is calculated by odds ratio. So that's our value. And then we multiply that by the exponential function raised to the power. So then our Z value, and then multiply that by what we're gonna calculate next is our standard error. So our standard error which will use the sigma, but I'll call it sigma hat. So that's our upper value of our confidence interval. And then our lower value is just simply our odds ratio times by the exponential function raised to the negative of our Z value and then our standard error function. Okay, so that's how we're gonna calculate our confidence interval. Okay, first of all, we need to calculate this standard error. So we've got our value here for our quantile function. Now we need the standard error. So the standard error is quite an intimidating looking formula. And basically what it is, it's just basically the reciprocal of all the values in our contingency table. So here we'll have standard, uh, the reciprocal of one over 83 plus one over 29 plus the reciprocal of 147 and the reciprocal of 302. Okay. Now, if you plug that into your calculator, you will get, well, you're gonna get an approximation here now, square root of 0 0.0566. That's to four decimal places. And then if you take the square root of that, you get 0.238 approximately. So that's our standard error. So I'm gonna write that here as standard error. So we need this calculation because we're working from a sample of a population. We're not working with the whole, value, uh, the whole de standard deviation. So that's just a sample. So now what we do is we've got this number here, which is our 0.238. We've got our quantile value, which is 1.96. Basically all we do now is we can just multiple, uh, put, put all these numbers into this brackets here, and then that will give us our confidence interval. So now our odds ratio from the positive one and our odds ratio from the negative one. So basically that just means it's gonna be above our odds ratio, and this one will be lower than our odds ratio. Hence, as we're raising it to the exponential function to a positive value, an exponential function to a negative value. So a negative value will always be less than one. Whereas a positive value is always gonna be greater than one, hence it's gonna increase our odds ratio. So now we've got, if you put in the values, we've got 5.880. Multiplied by, so E to the 1.96, times 0.238 and that will be our positive I see our upper value and then we've got 5.880 times e to the minus 1.96 times 0.238 and that will be our lower value of our confidence interval okay so all you need to do now is plug those into your calculator and see what values you get. So let me just write that down on here. So our odds ratio positive on our interval and our odds ratio negative, as in our upper and lower. Plug all these through into your calculator, then you will get for your upper value, 
9.375 and a lower value will be 3.688. So that's your confidence interval. So this answers in the numerical part of the question, but now we need to draw a conclusion. Okay, so now we've got our numerical solutions, we need to draw some sort of a conclusion. So with this odds ratio being quite a large positive number, and our confidence interval as well is also including large positive numbers, we can say there is definitely some sort of a correlation between being exposed to chemicals from burning at the chemical factory and giving you some symptoms uh, which were bad, were bad symptoms. So that's what our conclusion could be from our statistical test by working out our odds ratio. Okay.